Rocky. Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install and use BLogger on Kali Linux to create a keylogger that can be used on Windows. So uh, again, we're going to be using BLogger, which is a very powerful tool, um, but it ha does have some issues which we'll look into uh, in the next step. So let's get started. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be using the GitHub repository for installation. Additionally, you could use the lazy script to install BLogger, which is much easier. But if you guys are going with this uh, method, uh, it works perfectly as well. So what you want to do is go to the GitHub repository. I will leave the link in the description section so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, so all credits go to the Hawker, which is 4W4K3. He's the one who created BLogger. So all credits go to him. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to clone this GitHub repository. So I'm just going to copy the link and uh, we can get started with the terminal. All right. So first things first, let me just enlarge the terminal so we can see what's going on. Alrighty, so the first thing, I'm going to enter root, sudo bash, and uh, let me enter my password in. There we are. So now I want to browse to my desktop because that's where I want to install blogger, download and install the files for blogger. So we're going to clone the repository, git clone, and I'm going to paste in the GitHub uh, link that we copied. And I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, it's going to create our blogger folder. And hopefully this shouldn't take too much time. I'm using a VPN for my connection, which is why it'll probably take a few seconds to download. So uh, again, yours might be different if you're using your active uh, ISP connection, but I'm using a VPN that's limited to 500 kilobits per second. So I'll meet you when it's done. Alrighty, so once it's done downloading, we can actually continue. So we're going to browse into the, the B-Logger um, we're going to browse into the blogger folder. So we're going to change the directory. Uh, oops, let me just clear that out. So cd b blogger like so. And now we can look into the blogger folder and we have the install.sh file, which is a bash script. So uh, as you can see, we do have the permissions to run it. So it shouldn't be a problem at all to start the installation process. So I'm going to just uh, uh, use the installation. So install.sh, okay? And it's going to begin the installation process for the blogger script. So just give it a few seconds to start up because it does need to set up additional dependencies like Wine and Python or uh, PyCharm, for example. So just uh, let it start reading the package lists and we can get started with the installation process. So as I said, just give it a few seconds. It shouldn't take too much time. And as you can see, it's going to ask us for our wine configuration. So I'm just going to hit um, default settings and maybe change it to Windows 7 and hit apply. And then I'm going to hit OK. All right. And after that, it's going to ask us to set up Python 2.7. So as you can see, um, I already have it installed. So I'm just going to hit finish and it's going to just repair Python. But in your case, It'll uh, prompt you to install Python additionally all over again or in install it uh, fresh. So make sure you do that. And I've already installed Python. Then the next thing is going to ask me to install is PyWin. So the two bit version. So I'm just going to hit next and next. And it's going to install that for me. Pretty simple. So just let that complete. And uh, it shouldn't take too much time now. There we are. All right. So I'm just going to finish that installation. And now it's going to ask me to install PyHook. All right. PyHook is very important in this. So as, as I said, I already have mine installed. So it's, I'm just going to breeze over these uh, these installation processes. And there we are. So we've installed blogger now. And you might be asking yourself, well, how do I access blogger? If we view the uh, if we basically look inside the folder, we have the b.py. So Python and b.py. And if we start that up, as you can see, we have the blogger opened and running. So uh, in addition, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to exit and I'm going to start in a new terminal altogether because that has brought a few issues before after I've installed the uh, pi hook. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter root again. Excuse me like so and uh, 
cd desktop and obviously cd b logger and uh, python b dot pi like so and there we are so we're currently in the b logger uh, script right now and it's going to ask you as i said it's going to ask you now uh, to hit enter and before we get started as you can see use this for work or educational purposes so i have to throw out a disclaimer that please use this at your own discretion and you know i'm, I'm not going to be held responsible for anything you do with this tool so just hit enter to continue and now the options are pretty simple it's going to ask you uh, it's going to give you three options uh, k being the option to generate the key logger u being to update the b logger which is quite awesome that he added that all credits go to alison moretto and q to quit so we're going to generate the b logger which is done by using the key k key so once you hit that it's going to ask you uh, to select what type of key logger you want to mask exactly so you can choose an adobe flash update which is quite good uh, quite good and will help with social engineering to some extent you then have your fake word document which is really not convincing especially for users who are pretty familiar with computing and we then have the fake excel sheet which again is not very convincing because it is going to be an exe file we then have the fake PowerPoint, which is quite convincing because uh, it is a PowerPoint and uh, less people come in contact with PowerPoints, uh, with PowerPoint files as com when compared to Excel and Word documents. We then have the fake Acrobat PDF, which is also quite um, convincing. We then have the blank ex executable. And now before we get started with creating the B-logger, the, the thing about a B-logger is that it's very easy to create a B-logger. When I say create um, a keylogger, what I mean is not to actually create a keylogger by yourself or to script it, but to create a blogger that you're using to gain in information or you know you're you're trying to use for either malicious intent or uh, or, or for testing. It really comes down to how you're going to install it on your target's computer, how you're going to run it on your target's computer. And that's where social engineering comes into place. And we look, we'll be looking at techniques on how, on how to, uh, to be using this. And what I'm coming to really here is, uh, all of these will be detected by, uh, uh it'll, if you try and send any of these, uh, these keyloggers in forms of, for example, an Adobe Flash update, Gmail and all of the other top email providers will detect this as a virus and will probably throw the mail in spam or will alert the user or the target that this uh, does indeed contain a virus. So you really have to be smart. And if it comes to you down to using a rootkit to mask the keylogger or to avoid antivirus detection, you know, that that's where all the whole uh, social engineering process comes into. But as I said, we'll be looking at that in future videos and how to mask all of these uh, uh, exploits or uh, just basically how to mask your program or keylogger uh, to avoid detection by antiviruses and of course by users. Because as I said, uh, it's going to be less likely that you can trick people with things like this. For example, a fake word document that contains the, the, the .docx extension file, but also contains the .exe extension. So it's really important to understand that. So uh, let's get started with actually creating this keylogger. So it's going to tell you warning, enable access to less secure apps on your G email account. Now, what this means is you have to actually, uh, it's going to ask you to use a, a Gmail. Uh, as, you, as you can see, it's going to tell you only works with Gmail. Now, why you need to enter your or create a Gmail uh, email for this is because you're going to need an email in which uh, the keylogger program will be sending back the results to. So I would recommend creating um, a separate Gmail account just for getting your results back. But as you can see, don't it's going to tell you here, don't use your personal email, make a dedicated separate Gmail account uh, specific, uh, specific for the for the gathering of results. So once you've created it, you just want to click on this link. You can just open the link in a new tab and uh, hopefully it does that here. And it's going to ask you if you have signed into that Gmail account, it's going to ask you to disable. It's going to ask you to disable less secure apps on your email account. What this is going to do is it's going to allow your email to be under the control of the keylogger. So the keylogger will be able to log in and send requests and send the results from what it has gathered from the uh, from your target's computer or system and it'll save them on that email all right so 
as you can see this key logger will send uh, logs 50 characters or each uh, in 100 in intervals of 120 seconds so again very very powerful and you're getting extensive information of course this will become ineffective if the user is not connected to the internet but again you know this is how these things work and uh, there's always uh, pros and cons to each of the sites so uh, what I'm going to do, I, I, I've not created an email for this because I'll be explaining how to, to uh, mask this key logger in the next videos where I'll be showing you how to use social engineering to avoid detection, antivirus detection, and obviously to mask it uh, so that users cannot detect or, you know, it does not look obvious that this indeed is a virus or malware. So I'm just going to enter a, I'm just going to enter a simple, uh, we're just going to be using a, a just a, uh, a fake email address. So the, what I would recommend if you're going to be using this is to use the Adobe Flash update. The reason I'm saying this is because people, when they see Adobe Flash, they already know that this is an executable program. And from that, if it's an exe file, they, they wouldn't be as hesit hesitant uh, to running it as if you would have found a document with the exe extension. So again, I'm going to use the first one. And this is obviously for social engineering purposes. So Adobe Flash update, and it's going to ask you type your Gmail to receive the logs. So I'm just going to uh, hit test uh, at gmail.com. As I said, in the next video, the follow-up videos I'll be making, and I'll be showing you how to uh, essentially hide or to mask these key loggers and other malware from detection. So I'm just going to enter a random password. So test password of course these this email does not exist and this password again is not real i'm just using it to show you uh, that indeed it does create the key logger so um once you've entered the password just hit enter and it's going to ask you if this information is correct and i'm going to hit yes and it's going to start the creation process as you can see it's uh, creating the key logger and uh, just give it a few uh, seconds. Hopefully it shouldn't take too much time. Uh, again, uh, the it'll take uh, different times depending on what uh, type of executable you choose, whether you choose the flash update or the Word documents or Excel documents, etc., etc. So uh, that's actually done now. And hopefully, uh, I don't know where exactly it, uh, oh, there we go, saved to dist uh, slash bflash.exe. So obviously, again, as I as I mentioned previously, um, it's going to save it in the blogger folder that we created uh, in the dist folder. Now, what I was talking about here again, when when it comes down to social engineering, this is the keylogger file, very very powerful. But again, the trick is the trick has always been making sure that this runs on your target's computer without detection and without he uh, he he or her him or her basically finding out that it's running. Now with blogger. Um, as far as I know, uh, uh, once you run this, it'll basically install it. And the only way to dis uh, disable it as a service is through the MS config utility in Windows. So again, it does have the uh, ability to be uh, disabled or to, to be stopped. So that was just a little tidbit I wanted to throw in there for you. So again, uh, a bit of, uh, you could do a bit of, um, so, you know, social engineering and renaming this to uh, look like an Adobe Flash update. And um, I would say six times out of 10, you can get your target to run this uh, without them knowing that this is, in, is indeed malware. Now, I'm not gonna be running and testing this because as I said, if you try this on a modern Windows installation with uh, Windows Defender enabled or uh, w uh, running, or any other antivirus software, it's gonna detect that this is a virus. And even if you try and upload this to Gmail, it'll automatically detect that this is a virus so again we'll have to do a bit of social engineering in addition to that i'm going to be creating a special little uh, small course exclusive to the youtube channel where i'm going to be showing you how to create your very own keylogger with c plus plus now the reason for that there are obviously some specific advantages of using the, uh, c plus plus is that it is a very low lying uh, or uh, it's a very low uh, it's a very low level language in the sense that it, if I was to create a keylogger, Windows 9 times out of 10 would not detect that this has anything to do with malware or is malicious uh, content of any type. In addition to that, an antivirus software would not have been able to detect it. 
So that's basically it for this video, guys. As I said, I'm going to be making follow-up videos to this whole B-logger section that I've uh, created, or in, in the larger context, the Keylogger section on this channel. So stay tuned for that. I hope you found value in this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, suggestions, you know, or you just want to have a chat, uh, you, you can hit me up on my social networks or just let me know in the comment section be down below. In addition, you can check out uh, an in-depth guide of this video on my website. Uh, you can also uh, check out the Discord server that I've created for the channel where we'll be having discussions and where you can send me your video suggestions and we, where we can basically just interact. Thank you so much for the support and I will be seeing you in the next video. Peace.